Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking all things home birth prep. So if you haven't been here already, my name is Kitty. I am a soon-to-be third-time mama with a beautiful bonus daughter as well and this is going to be my third home birth. I'm also a birth worker. Uh, I am a birth and postpartum doula, registered general nurse, a lactation consultant, hypnobirthing instructor, antenatal educator, all of the things. But over here we like to do things a little bit more on the natural side. I'm very much um, a country living, homemaker, granola, crunchy style content and we also homeschool our kiddos. So that is a little taste of what we do and this is going to be my third home birth. So there are things that I have both figured out that I love to have and love to do from each of my own births, but also from seeing them in action with births that I have attended, right down to the most recent birthday I attended. That I was like, oh, that is something I would like to have in my toolkit. So be prepared for a very breathless video. I am super pregnant, baby is right up there. So you might have taken a couple of pauses along the way, but I'm gonna go through the bits and pieces that I have gathered in my toolkit for this birth. Things that are not pictured my birth tub. It's over there. It's set up. We have done a dry run, which is basically like blowing up the pool to see how long it will stay inflated to make sure there's no like holes or tears or anything has gotten into it to make sure there's enough space to try it out and see if it's comfortable like on my knees. For most people, it's totally fine to just leave it as is. You can also get really cute about it and leave like little fairy lights underneath so that if it's dark you have that nice kind of warm glow. Some people also put like a, a bean bag in underneath the birth pool for somewhere to like sit or lean or kneel on um, or just like a rug, a nice soft rug. So that is for comfort. For practicality sense I always recommend putting a waterproof layer at least underneath if not around the perimeter a little bit as well. We just use like a shower curtain or um, you can also use like an oil cloth if you have like a picnic blanket or something. <laughs> but certainly for keeping your floors nice and dry, but also getting in and out, it can be quite tricky. And I'm only, I'm only five foot nothing. So I'm a short little mama and getting in and out of a, a tall enough birth pool when you've got a big pregnant belly or a newborn in your arms can be that little bit trickier. And so this is something that um, I always make sure is practiced and I will sometimes consider having like a little footstool or something nearby. So that's the first thing that is not pictured. Um, other things then other tools and things that I like to access is uh, warm water. So whether that is the shower or the birth, birth pool or just like the normal bath and then thinking about how I'm going to fill that up. So with my last birth he was so so super fast that we actually didn't have time for a warm birth pool and this time around I've been really like thinking about it really on it I wanted to make sure that that was something that was a priority this time around so we have got there's several ways to heat and fill your birth pool you can of course if you have good heating just go ahead and get a, a hose and fill it up with warm water directly from your tap with us we have a well and we have a tank and the tank is just not quite big enough to fill the entire pool. And so this time around, we have invested in borrowing our community hall's local like Burko to heat water. And we also have accessed um, or borrowed friends like massive big pots to fill with hot water so that we can just keep topping it up. So taking out some hot water or some colder water, putting in more hot water. You want the birth pool to be at approximately 37 degrees centigrade. So it's nice to kind of keep an eye on temperature as well and yeah, keeping the space nice and warm. So another of the things that we did was we made sure that I've like cleared out the stove so we can have the stove lit, have like our nice wood burning stove going. But also if we don't have time for that, I've got like the oil tank filled so that we can just turn on the heating and just have it nice and cozy. So for me, I don't really dress my babies in the beginning. We just throw a nappy on them and then just spend two weeks or so skin to skin. And so that's been really, really lovely the last few times. And I want to do that again this time, which will be made easier because of the fact that it's summer, but also having a really like warm environment. 
is ideal to that so we can both be naked so warmth birth pool how are you going to heat it making sure that it's you know safe and there's no holes that it's not going to wreck your floor um they're the main things <laughs> other practical things that i like to have i've also got my birth ball which woo, is just here i'm gonna chuck that out of the way this time round. <laughs> I think I have nailed it down to five towels and three receiving blankets. I tend to use dark towels or towels that I don't mind getting covered in blood or messy or dirty. I've also got loads of these incontinence sheets. Here, let me show you. So, loads of these sheets to throw down both underneath me, and then I can just toss them into the bigot in the bin. And then another one that is a reusable one. So, I've made my bed twice and put one of these in between the sheets. It's like a like a bed lasagna so you make your sheets you lay down your waterproof sheet you make it again so if your waters go overnight you just strip off the top or if you're laboring in bed and then last time i labored kind of between the the pool and then on the sofa so having this underneath me was really really lovely just as a, a safety net a catch-all so that is one thing i have a nice big pack of maternity pads we also have placenta bowl this time around i think we're gonna do like so first time i did absolutely nothing with my placenta i was like take it away i don't care we're not into like encapsulating or eating our placenta <laughs> but um then the second time around i buried it underneath a like our little rose bush in the garden and this time around i think i'll do the same <gasps> oh my golly this is the reality of filming when you're very pregnant um okay so that is one thing I've talked about towels, receiving blankets, yeah, nice, like, soft, warm blankets. I don't plan on, like, rubbing my baby down aggressively or anything, so it's something that's nice and soft to the touch. We also decided this time to go for a cover for the birth pool. So when we talked about keeping it warm, you can get these, like, immersible or submersible heaters that keep maintain a certain temperature, um, which we, they're about 50 quid on Amazon. You can buy them relatively easily. But equally, once you have filled up your birth pool and you know that it's at a temperature that you like, but you don't want to get in just yet, you can get these covers. So we've got like a sort of tarpaulin type thing. So we've got one of those, which is ready to go. I'm looking at the things that are out of my out of my view. Fairy lights. I'm going to peg up some little affirmations just underneath the mantle in the sitting room. I think I'm going to do like a separate vlog of just chatting through me creating the birth space um, and then I've got some like sweet little beeswax candles I also have I love heat in labor chances are anything that you like when you have um, contractions related to your period or like your crampy related to your period or early labor contractions are going to be things that you're going to love as labor progresses so my heat pack this will go on my lower belly on my lower back I also have an electric heat pad but you have to plug that one in so I don't like it so much so this I can just like tie around my waist if I need to the only thing about this is you have to reheat it afterwards so that's not so lovely I also have invested this time around in this beautiful earth sling which I'm really excited to use it just hooks up over the door really sturdy to sort of hang out of like that lovely upper body stretch creates space here which opens up the pelvis and I'm just really excited to use that I am reaching across ooh, for all of my things the next thing that popped out here is I have two of these lovely little wave combs so if you have taken already my empowered birth course you'll know all about these but these work so beautifully um, along these lovely acupressure points but also it works on that sort of pain gate pathway which is that our body can only process one sensation at any time. And if we're creating that sensation here, which is of course above our uterus, we process that first. So it's a beautiful acupressure, distraction um, tool. And yeah, I really like them. I've seen them work beautifully with clients. I did not use them myself last time, so I'm curious to try them this time. The other thing is just with birth breathing. We ha I do have, where did I put it now? Gosh, you could tell I was very unorganized for this video, apparently. But I have my winner flow, which I've done a whole separate video on this, actually. So the winner flow is a lovely little breathing device. 
your breath is a surefire way for you to remind your body that it is in a safe place, for you to come back to a state of calm by slowing down that exhale. So it's, it's a focus, control, distraction tool. And with this, it works really beautifully to just increase the resistance on your exhale. So it forces you to slow down. So if you've been having a difficult time getting into your hypnobirthing breathing or you're slowing down, getting finding yourself kind of getting into a, a fast uh, breathing sequence during labor, this can be a really nice way to just sort of nudge you to slow down. So that's the winner flow. I'll link the separate video where I talked all about it and how to use it down below, but it's a, quite a cheap little tool, very handy. Only thing, yeah, it's a couple of caveats of why I like it and don't like it. Some mamas absolutely love it. For me, the only reason that I wouldn't like it is because they're small, you can lose them. So I always recommend buying two, one for practice at home, one for your labor bag. But also the way that you hold on to them, I don't know if you saw there. So you hold on to it this way. And you can see already, I have to engage my jaw, which tells me that I'm holding a tight pelvic floor because the jaw and the floor, pelvic floor are so inter interconnected. And so for me, there's that little offset there where I'd be going, okay, we're having a hard time relaxing our face and our jaw. We're having a hard time relaxing our pelvic floor. So what you have to do, unless you're holding onto it with your hand, it's very difficult um, to not connect those two. So you want to keep a soft pelvic floor. Lip balm, if we're doing a lot of that breath breathing, we're going to need to have something to mind our lips. This one's particularly nice because it's got mint in it, peppermint from the birth box company who sent me some of these lovely bits and pieces and um, some of which I already had some of which I've never had before so this is one of them that's lovely the peppermint is particularly nice um, I don't tend to have oh hang on baby's awake okay I'm back back in the room baby's now awake baby I mean Archer is now awake this baby is very much awake as well um trying to now remember where I was but also when I was upstairs <laughs> grabbing Archer I realized that there's also two more things that I didn't add to this list and that is food and drinks so along with the importance of you know moving with your body and gravity and emptying your bladder nice and frequently lots of visits to the loo to make sure there's space for baby to descend it's also really important that we fuel our body well so for me, I love to make up like a labor aid drink. Generally, that's some sort of sweetened drink, whether it's got a base of coconut water or a juice of some kind or like a pre-made, like, you know, there's like marathon. If you're going to run a marathon, you get like these little sachets, gel glucose sachets or whatever. And I like to add in some salts, some electrolytes, your potassium, your sodium. So, so important for our body to be able to utilize those uptake those in order that we can have our uterus which is this beautiful bag of muscle contract and relax well it's hard work it's hard work for a body it's hard work for us we need to fuel our body well and so i also add in like other snacks and things like that i haven't actually bought any like specific labor snacks this time but um i have made some nice little goodies so i always have something on hand to nibble and for me, my priorities in early labor are get into bed until I no longer can. So I will not chase labor. You will not catch me chasing labor. I will be most likely horizontal until I can, my body tells me I have to be up and moving through to make the contractions more manageable and or eating. So I will always have like a decent meal with like fats, protein, fiber at the beginning of my labors. So, because you don't often feel like eating that little bit later on, so oftentimes I will recommend like freezing a portion of your labor aid drink or cocktail, whether that's just like a flat Lucozade sport with maybe a calcium carb or electrolyte mix crushed into that, or maybe it's, you know, a little bit of your honey, um, a little bit of trace minerals, a little bit of your coconut water. There's lots of different recipes online. I will try and share mine with you down below, the one that I love to use. But I will always recommend freezing half of that in like a popsicle form because not only is it going to cool you down because labor is hard work, but also it's a really lovely way to hydrate yourself and give yourself a boost of sugar because sometimes we don't feel like eating. 
Okay, so that's those two things. Toilet, food, water, rest, covered. I also like to have two kind of cloths on hand. These are just normal face cloths and I will do two. I do two for my clients, I do two for myself, some of them don't need them, some of them don't want them, same with everything here. I would much rather have the things, have the toolkit and have things to dip in and out of if I want them and need none of them than not have them and want them. Um, now I'm very lucky and you definitely don't need all of these things by any means. This is like an extended version of like a home birth toolkit or like if you're a birth worker toolkit and you might need none of them and that's also beautiful. So the idea with the cloths is you have a dark one and a light one. Light one is for your forehead, for your chest, for your back with some nice cold water to just cool you down. Running it over your lips even can be really lovely. And then the darker one is for down below as a perineal compress, a nice hot compress. Fill your basin up with some nice warm water, like almost hot water, putting your cloth into there and soaking it in there and then placing it as like a counter pressure on your perineum just as ahead of suit when you start pushing particularly as your baby is crowning can help you to sort of soften the tissues reducing the likelihood of tearing i've never used one again my clients and i've used them with my clients but not for me um but nice to have on hand the other thing that i picked up accidentally is my sweet little embroidered cord tie i don't use the plastic clips um for myself for my clients because they can dig into baby's tummy buttons and be really sore or dig into their tummies and be really sore. Uh, so this you tie twice on one side, twice on the other side. It's really tight and works in exactly the same way. And um, it's kind of cute if you're keeping it as a little namesake, baby cute stuff. Um, okay, next thing then is we're talking about, what am I, what am I missing here? We're talking about acupressure, counter pressure, massage. I like to use these two tools. This is a beautiful wooden, almost like a massage ball, laundry ball. I have two of these to roll around the sort of lower back area. And then specifically, so you can use like, you know, your counter pressure, your sacral pressure, your double hip squeeze. And then specifically, I like for acupressure to use these little acupressure plasters. So these are so cute and so easy. And you literally just, you can go ahead and like mark out your acupressure points from... 37 weeks onwards with like a little sharpie marker with your partner it should be somewhere I, I will if you want I can send you the entire acupressure guide or we talk about it all this and so much more in my um, empowered birth course and you will learn all the different points and also just like how to find them how to utilize them and some people will use like popcorn kernels for this or pumpkin seeds with a bit of medical grade tape I like to mark them out from 37 weeks with a sharpie get these cute little acupressure plasters, just a lovely point just here, kind of two finger breaths in from if you're put to put your thumb and index finger together. So about here, you should feel a little bit of give, but also a little bit of tenderness. You can just apply those acupressure, this acupressure plaster and then maintain the pressure down on that as opposed to trying to find it, worrying things are gonna fall off. You don't have to apply, apply as much pressure with those plasters in place really really nice and super cheap you can get like a load of these on amazon for very very little so that is acupressure i also like to look at lighting so like that i have some fairy lights i have some beautiful little beeswax tea lights you can also go ahead and use a salt lamp but we're just like turn off the main lighting and just have like dimmer lighting on if for some reason it is a very very bright i'm trying to sleep i for some reason need to be transferred into the hospital uh, and I need more darkness. I recommend everyone has one of these. Um, this is not the one that this is not my favorite one. It is um, really, really soft, but it also presses on the eyelashes, which bothers me. <laughs> there are ones that you can get that have like, um, they're slightly elevated and slightly padded, um, which I will share the link to that down below my entire like Amazon storefront. But an eye mask is really nice because with that you know oxytocin being the driving force the accelerator behind our contractions melatonin is the pal of oxytocin and so when we have a dark dim room that is conducive to you feeling that sense of privacy of autonomy of security and safety we are more likely to have our oxytocin drivers on and our contractions are working really well so 
keeping the lights dim, that feeling of feeling really like safe and un uninhibited is what we want. So an eye mask is a must. Next thing then is sound. So for me, I have like a beautiful labor playlist of just music that makes me feel really good. And I also have some meditations. It might feel a little, sound a little bit weird, but I will listen to my own meditations because that is me in a calm state, reminding myself to be in a calm state, which I think for me sings so true to my brain and makes so much sense. Um, but something to listen to that on. I have my blue, little Bluetooth speaker here that's also waterproof. So I, I drop it in the shower or in the bathtub or whatever, it's totally fine. But that is charged up and ready to go. I will also recommend that you bring like an extra long cable if you're going into the hospital for charging any sort of device that you might need. You can also use you know, Apple AirPods or something that goes over your head if you feel like you will just want to be more in the zone and less in connection with your birth team, if that makes sense. So that's worthwhile thinking about. Oh, on lighting, I also got this. It's like a, a starry light projection. So it's, um, if it's going to be nighttime, obviously this won't work so well during the daytime, but if it's going to be nighttime, it projects like a starry night sky onto the roof, which is just really, really cute little touch, particularly if you're in the hospital and you're trying to create a more home from home, relaxed environment. Um, okay, so one of the last things that I wanted to mention then is the TENS machine. And I have used this through all of my labors. And I would say it's like my second favorite tool overall, aside from like your breath work and just really focusing on like being in connection with your body and moving in ways that feel good. The TENS machine is a fantastic tool to have and it works beautifully and very similarly in the way that it very similarly to um how these little combs work so with that pain gate theory um, and it's also fantastic from a sense of control you've got with the, any um this is the baby care tens specific one but with any one that is made for birth you have a boost button so what happens is you have this low frequency pulsation on your lower back and of course you can move the pads down as your labor intensifies and uh, whenever you get to that peak of that contraction, so it goes like a wave, when it reaches the crest of that wave, you hit your boost button, and then the, incre the, the pulsation increases. And so it can be a really beautiful tool to interfere with that sense, the sensations of labor. And it also can work really nicely to increase our dopamine, which is our natural feel-good hormones, our natural endorphins, our natural pain relievers. So it makes labor more comfortable overall. Second to last thing, is my beautiful rebozo which i love in pregnancy i love using it with my uh, my clients in labor i have not loved this so much myself but every birth is different so i'm excited to see if that's something that's going to be and something that i'm going to lean on and then the last few little bits and pieces then are some um herbal tinctures which are going to be really nice to have on hand so i have a shepherd's purse angelica root and then cramp bark which all have various different reasons and um this is a new addition to my kit but nice to have alongside the medications that my midwives will bring and um, they actually have already dropped them off so they're already like up out of the way tucked away from little kitties and that is it there are a lot of things in this list. You do not need all of these things. If you want to get the like more concise things you absolutely need for your home birth toolkit list sent to you, put a comment down below and I will get it out to you ASAP. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. It's really got me in the zone for meeting this sweet little baby. If you are hoping to stay posted and know when she arrives, Go follow me on Instagram because that's probably where I'm going to be announcing it first. And now it's time to do a little bit more nesting to jazz up this little birth environment for me.